about uh, the ecumenical things that go on from time to time. Do we see much of that these days? Well, I think that there's a very vibrant uh, ecumenical movement here in the, in the Twin Cities. Um, we've got the Metropolitan Council of Churches. We've got other groups that are, uh, uh, Bon Clayton has a whole group that uh, get together every month. Um, and uh, we uh, have been working on a number of things uh, through the uh, Minnesota C Catholic Conference uh, on the question of eliminating poverty and that sort of thing. And that's been a very ecumenical uh, project and endeavor which I've been involved in, and as was Archbishop Flynn before me. So um, that, that really, you know, my Episcopal motto, when you become a bishop, you pick a motto. And my motto was that they all might be one. And I picked that precisely from the 17th chapter of St. John's Gospel because I wanted to spend my time as being a bishop building up the unity of the church, building unity between churches, and then building a sense of harmony in the world. And if I can do anything to push those three agendas forward, that's what I want to spend my time doing. So I think, uh, you know, this was one of the most heartfelt prayers of Jesus, that his disciples would be one. And the scandal of our disunity of being broken up into so many different denominations, all professing our belief in Christ, uh, it really is a scandal to the world. We just lost a, a great metropolitan of the Orthodox Church. Uh, um, I, I'm not sure what they call the metropolitan. I think of him as the, he's not a pope, but he's more like patriarch. a patriarch. 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 Yeah, they patriarch. Yeah. yeah. And um, we have a uh, Orthodox community here. I grew up in it, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And um, it's, uh, do we have much nationally or internationally to do with the Orthodox Church these days? Oh, there's a, there's a very significant uh, dialogue with our bishops' conference and the Orthodox uh, bishops. Um, and I have never had the opportunity to be a part of that. But um, a, a few of the bishops who are good friends of mine are involved in that. And that's, that's a very, um, I would say, um, high-powered kind of dialogue. I mean, they really get into some solid theological issues. And as you know, um, Pope Benedict himself sees real possibilities of our becoming closer to the Orthodox mm -hmm. Church. He's worked very hard on that since he became Pope. So I have great hopes that this is uh, an area where we're going to see uh, even closer union in the future. Well, Your, Your Excellency, one of the things uh, facing the Church and, and our whole society, our government and everything, is, is um, how, to, how to deal with and treat uh, our immigration population in this area, particularly in Hispanic people, Somalian mm -hmm. people, we're getting a lot of new people here, which I think is a good thing, but, yes. but it must concern you. Well, it does, because so many of these are, um, are Catholic people. You, we have the Hmong, we have the Vietnamese, we have the Koreans, uh, we have Hispanics. Uh, we, there are 24 places in this archdiocese where we have Mass in Spanish on Sundays. 24? 24. 24. So, um, it's really important for us to reach out and to, to welcome these people. We do that in Christ's name, obviously, and we don't do it in a political way. We do it in a way of Christian charity, reaching out. Uh, and we have um, really um, uh, worked, tried to work with the government in terms of making life easier for these peoples. Um, I heard a statistic the other day, I think it was um, in this country, one out of ten uh, people are immigrants, wow. something like that. And um, so you see how important it is for us to integrate these people into mm -hmm. our life. I mean, what would we do economically even if we sent all these people back across the border? You know, I think that's something uh, a lot of people don't understand who are, are kind of critical about the new immigrants, and that is that these people are contributing heavily to our society. They're doing jobs that in some cases <clears throat> a lot of other people wouldn't do. They're paying Social Security, they're paying into Medicare or Medicaid, a lot of them can't collect, even collect that. Right. And so, I mean, uh, they're contributing greatly. Right. And the church is really working to, uh, to try to make the system better. And, uh, you know, it's, I think everyone knows that it's pretty much broke, broken at this point. Um, but, again, to respect the dignity of each man, woman, and child, and to make sure that that dignity is intact, uh, that's the concern of the church. And it's kind of fun too, isn't it? It's kind of fun seeing all those new people and how they adapt. And, it is. You know, it is. they're so good at getting along <laughs> and passing us up sometimes yeah. economically. And well, they've got some some high values. I mean, they put a many of them put very strong values on the the, the uh, cohesiveness of the family, 
uh, the uh, sense of dependence that they have on one another, um, making sure that they continue their own traditions and customs, uh, even in the foreign land. So uh, I, I think there's a lot that we can learn from the immigrants as well. They've got something to give to us as well as we have to give to them. I got to spend a couple of years in India, and um, one of the things that always impressed me about the Indian people was how strong their families are. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they actually have this belief that as you get older, you get wiser. <laughs> we, have, we don't always have that here. No, that's true. <laughs> and, uh, but you said there's a great many things we can learn from them. I think there are. I think we, we've only begun to tap their talents exactly. and what they can teach us. And I'm glad to see the church is doing that. And I think a lot of it is, just has to do with attitude. You know, if we have an open attitude to greeting these people as a brother and sister, um, uh, it, it goes a long ways towards making their life and our life collectively uh, better. Well, um, we're getting towards the end of our interview. It's gone so quickly because of it has, I'm everything sure that you know about and have to say. Um, in the Twin Cities particular, we, we are having a bit of a concern and problem with, with the Muslim uh, population, and people are concerned about where that goes and everything. Do you have any contact with the people, the Muslim people in our area? Unfortunately, I haven't had much contact here um, in Detroit. I had quite a, a substantial. I it's much was bigger Imam, there. Yes, yes, much bigger there. Um, but it's it's an area that we need to look at. And uh, again, I think there's, you know, always when we meet somebody who's different from us, there's there's, there's a tendency to draw back. I think we have to go out and we have to learn more. And um, I mean, I ha have a firm belief that that these people in their religious faith, which is very demanding on them, you know, um, uh, the different uh, the Ramadan and the other right. uh, fastings that they do, and the, they were very commendable. And these are peace-loving people by and large, I think. They get uh, whitewashed with the, the terrorists uh, among them, but the, the people who are here, I believe, genuinely uh, want to be here for the, for the good of the country. I think that's true, and I did get to live with them. Um, some um, Muslim people and they're the nicest, kindest people in the world. I think these people who are causing the trouble hijack the religion. Mm -hmm. And um, well, there's extremists in in any group that's that you right. find, you know. That's right, unfortunately. But um, they, the Muslim population that's here seems to be doing well. And um, I know that you have this outreach program for all the new immigrants, and I think that's that's such a wonderful example in your ecumenical work. Uh, we're just very happy to have you here, and we're lucky to get you. Well, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. This is my home now. Yeah, and just the last thing I'd like to ask you about, uh, the difference between uh, Detroit and, and uh, the, there's the obvious differences, but that's a bigger place. This, this has got to seem, seem small. Um, well, it seems big enough to me. <laughs> it, it is. Um, but I think the fact that, uh, particularly here in the Twin Cities, the fact that we have two downtowns and that sort of thing. That's it's kind of fun. It, it is fun, but it kind of makes up for the fact they only have one downtown in Detroit, <laughs> you know. Um, so um, uh, I, I've really enjoyed my time here, and I look forward to, to being here for the rest of my life, actually. Well, our time is up, but I want to thank you so much for allowing us to come and visit you here uh, on Mirror on the Metro. And we hope we can come back again and, and sometime. I'd love to have you back. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're very welcome, John. Thanks. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. And we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much.